The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. For Real Agriculture, I'm Kelvin Hepner, and pleased to be joined in this canola field by Jason Vogt of Field to Field Agronomy. And Jason, we're standing in uh, in this in the middle of a trial here, actually looking at seed placed fertilizer. Can you fill us in on what you're looking at with this trial, and maybe some of the the lessons that could be learned here? Sounds good, Kelvin. Yeah. So what we're doing is uh, basically looking at seed placed fertilizer, and basically uh, looking at what a grower would typically apply in furrow with his canola seed. And through working with the Manitoba canola growers who approached us to, you know, set up some trials with some of our growers, what we're doing is basically running a, a trial, just one pass down the field, where in the first 200 feet, uh, the grower applies his standard treatments that he normally would put in furrow with the canola, and then another 200 feet with no fertilizer at all, so he's shut his in furrow treatment completely off. And then the next 200 feet is uh, actually one and a half times the normal rate. So in this particular field here, what we have is uh, growers using Micro Essentials S15 at 120 pounds per acre as a standard treatment. And so then the one and a half X treatment is now 180 pounds per acre. Okay. And right now the, the crop is obviously uh, is cabbaging and, and filling out, covering the, the ground. But uh, what did you find when you did plant, plant stand counts earlier in the season? Yeah, so we were expecting to see some response, obviously, and especially with being a drier season too or drier spring this is a sandy soil here and we do have treatments set up in clay as well um, between single disc drill as well as a hoe drill and this is a john deere single disc drill that we used here and i expected some response but what i saw here was pretty pretty lights out um, when i did plant counts we definitely lost a, a lot of plants um, in that one and a half x treatment when you looked at it visually you still look like you had a decent stand and even with the standard treatment it looked okay but as soon as you had no fertilizer at all, it was very dramatic. Much, much better uh, emergence, more even emergence as well. Okay. So does that tell us that what we think is a, a standard rate is actually causing more damage to canola seed and seedlings than maybe what we think? I would agree. Yeah, I think we're seeing that. And I mean, it's something that we've always wondered about because uh, we have different spring conditions, right? And we don't really know what to expect, so, you know, what we can get away with and what we can't. We know that we can maybe have a more of a buffer and get away with more in a heavy clay soils with higher organic matter. But even in those conditions, we saw differences as well. So I think we not, need to really revisit uh, how much we're applying, that maybe the safe rates that we are applying are still maybe too high. And that pushing it is really not helping us out at all. Okay. I guess at this point we're, we're counting plants. We're not necessarily looking at yield on those plants in those sections. So I, I guess that variable has yet to be considered, but in terms of potential uh, here, you can certainly see a lot more ground in, in this section of the field than in the area where there's no fertilizer applied. Exactly. That's right. I mean, ultimately uh, it'd be nice to take it to yield. All we were, were requested to do by the Manitoba canola growers was just take uh, Plant, uh, plant stand counts at three or four leaf stage, do tissue and uh, soil tests as well. And after that, that was it. And I think the reason being is we want to see what the effect is at the establishment because that's really critical with canola. But after that, we also know that canola is very elastic plant that can recover and compensate quite a bit. Yeah. But why it's important to look at this early establishment is that we're always, other than this spring, dealing with cool soils, mostly wet soils, issues with flea beetles, sometimes our canola sits in the ground for two weeks. Anything we can do to lessen that stress on the crop to get it out of the ground more evenly and more uniform is just going to help us out that much better. Yeah, We like to blame the flea beetles, but maybe we're uh, setting the crop back before that, before they even have a chance to, to snack on it. I think there is a possibility. I, I can see it here right away. Yeah. So does this overall lead to i guess the idea or the thought jason that we should invest in different ways of getting our fertilizer down or looking at different ways of getting fertilizer the nutrients to into the field for our canola crop rather than together with the seed yeah i think there is i mean first of all i think we can first examine how much we're applying to begin with and maybe we can back off and still have some of that uh, pop-up effect that we want to have for canola but i think we also need to look at yeah are there other opportunities to use mid-row band uh, systems and things like that. Um, I don't know if really there's one fertilizer product that's safer than another. I don't think there really is. Um, there are th products like Crystal Green that are certainly 
would be a lot safer, but then you're not going to have that availability right, right away. But could be looking at something where you have blends of that with maybe another uh, form of phosphorus. But I think the other side of it too is we do see a lot of guys that are planting their canola with a planter. They're applying their fertilizer completely separate, whether it's banded or broadcasted, fall or spring. And I can't see them not getting as good a yield as anybody else. Mm -hmm. So maybe we just need to look at different ways of and timing of when we apply it as well. Yeah. And I guess equipment differences also make it like in terms of seedbed utilization and the concentration of that fertilizer in a band relative to the seed, all of those factors need to be considered as well. Yes, exactly. And I think that's a good point. So one of the treatments that we have in the clay is with a hoe drill. And uh, even though it's not a six inch sweep or anything, there is a little bit more spread of that fertilizer versus a, a single disc. And I think that's why we're maybe not seeing as much of a difference there between the standard rate and the, and the uh, no fertilizer, because we're getting a little bit of a uh, distribution of that fertilizer to help it make it a little bit safer. So it's maybe looking at those type of systems as well as far as openers. Yeah. You mentioned planters and usually with when you're planting canola you're using a lower seeding rate. I guess the, the other option or another option here would be to use more canola seed, put more seed in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Some people might not agree on that side of it because of how expensive canola seed is, but obviously I think we shouldn't have to use any more if we're managing that fertility better and how we place, you know, because we're then going to have more seed get out of the ground as actual plants. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we really need to do that okay. as much. Okay, we'll take that one off the table. Exactly. Thanks for your time today, Jason. Thank you, Calvin. Thanks. Thanks.